So ladies and gentlemen, our next session for the day is a panel discussion on the magic 100 million. How do we get there? Oh my, my. There are about 70 to 80 million online video subscribers in India. As per a BCG report, what is required to drive new subscribers into this ecosystem? This is a big question. Now our panel of content producers and distributors will speak about their role in bringing paying OTT subscribers to 100 million. We are joined by esteemed industry leaders. So uh, firstly, I would like to call upon stage Mr. Abhishek Regi, who is the Chief Executive Officer, Endemol Shine India. Can we have a big round of applause for Mr. Abhishek? Please welcome, sir. Along with him, I would like to call upon stage Mr. Shibashish Sarkar, Chairman and CEO, International Media Acquisition Corporation. Please welcome, sir. Would like to request you, all of you, to please take the respective chairs uh, on the stage. Please welcome Mr. Shibashish. He's there? Okay, he's on his way. Along with him, uh, we would like to call upon stage Mr. Siddharth Kumar Trivari, founder and chief creative, Swastik Productions and One Life Studios. Please welcome on stage. He's also coming, I believe. Along with them, I would like to call upon stage Mr. Vikram Tanna, who is the Chief Operating Officer, Mazalo. Mr. Vikram, please welcome. And this session will be moderated by the one and only, our IndianTelevision.com's founder, CEO, and editor-in-chief, Mr. Anil Valmari, who is already there. Uh, can we have a big, big round of applause for all the three uh, personalities who are on stage right now for this wonderful session? Uh, you've been pretty busy, uh, Brege. I'll hand the mic to you. So what have you been up to at Endemol Shine? What have, been, what have you been up to on the OTT side until the rest of the speakers come? So I think um, largely the focus, as has been with the market, has been on scripted. Uh, but of late, we see um, an emerging trend for a requirement on non-scripted as well. Uh, reality is really paying off on OTTs. We see that with consumption of our linear shows coming up on OTTs. Uh, but we also see a demand for an OTT only, um, you know, non-scripted kind of a genre coming up. So I think the focus is right now growing, in fact, to much like what pay TV was. So that's across the board for now. Fantastic. So we've got the rest of our panelists. I've got Sid in a lovely dhoti <laughs> and t-shirt. And Shibash is in his usual self. Uh, great to have you guys on board here. 100 million. I mean, you know, we've said it's 70, 80 million. I believe it's less than that. What's your estimate on it? As, as a, you know, Shibash, you've been in, in the market for many, many years. What's your estimate on the audience space, really? I think, uh, let me start with this discussion, which me and Siddharth, we have been uh, chatting maybe 10, 15 minutes back. Uh, Last two years, I think I have spoken in as many sessions which I have not done in the last 25 years of my career. And now when I look back, everything what I've said, majority is wrong by hindsight. Uh, the fact of the life is that it's a large country from a global uh, economic, social, culture point of view. This has to be the most important market. Uh, <coughs> we are all aware the hot topic of the morning, what happened to Netflix share, how the numbers gone down yesterday, uh, and how in India is a large important market because there is no entry point in China. Because if you have to get your numbers for the global players, if you can't enter, uh, if your North America market is saturated, uh, Europe is basically small, you have the purchasing power, you have no other option but to look at Asia Pacific or LATAM. And if you in Asia Pacific you can't enter China, I mean it's, it's, it's arithmetic. You have, to, you have to make yourself successful. Now, whether that number is 100 million, whether that number is 200 million or etc. Uh, I think what we need to fix is that what we need to do correctly uh, than keeping a goal, we should have a goal because organizations thrive and live on that. Uh, who knows that next vidnet, Anil, you will be saying that why the number is not 250 million. So that will be my take. 
Rick, your, your perspective on this, on the 100 million figure, the 70, 80 million, my, my estimates are much lower than what uh, BCG and CII are saying. I think they're sub 60 million because See, there's so much of churn happening. People come in, they subscribe, they unsubscribe, they keep coming on and off and they're sharing a lot of the uh, uh, accounts. So I have a very different perspective. It's a personal opinion. But the reason you're looking at X number of subscribers is eventually to get these businesses to thrive. So having 100 million, is it enough? Because what's your mixed revenue eventually, right? Uh, we've seen this in the presentation before. There's a lot of free stuff, bundling, telecom giving off completely free. Uh, I mean, you buy white goods, you get free subscriptions for six months. That's not sustainable, right? So when does the revenue grow? So I think the outlook is more about not an X number of subscribers or not, but when does your overall revenue stack up enough as the networks in the pay TV business were having. So like he said, hopefully it's 250 million next year or whatever, but I think we have to start seeing where the money is really coming from. And therefore, will an award or a mix of, uh, much like our TV network space is, Will it actually be a mix of a subscription and a award? Uh, will it be like a Kindle format? You know, which when it came in, it was, let's say, $79 for a paid thing. So, which gave you ads, actually, which was free. And then you had to pay a little more to get a Kindle that was ad-free. Does that model work? Because that's exactly how we do it on an SD and an HD, where ads are less. Uh, and more targeted. So I think that's the kind of space that we'll need to look at as OTT players and content creators to see where we land up with better revenues, really. Vikram? I have a little different perspective on this. Uh, you know, if you look at the... Okay, let me, let me just introduce myself. So our platform is Xfinite Global PLC. Uh, we're a decentralized entertainment ecosystem. Uh, we have a token which is called XCT. It is listed on the exchange and the value of the token is actually determined by the community. Uh, so we believe in equal distribution of value creation amongst all the stakeholders. A community comes first, it's the fans first culture, the content producers and the talent and the brands. Uh, the platform is live, uh, we've got users, we've also created a beta version of our NFT marketplace and we strongly believe that content drives commerce is the reality. So you have streaming and if you like moments, uh, we all remember moments rather than the entire content piece. You can, you can quickly go and you know, buy, sell, resell NFTs. Of course, they have to have multiple utilities and we'll talk more about it. Uh, and, and my view is a little bit different on, on the question which you asked, uh, Anil. You know, I, I agree that it's the great Indian population. We are, we are 1.4 billion Indians and we all know this is a fertile land, right? So it's not going anywhere in terms of pure population. And we are a well-connected economy today. There are a lot of moving parts here which are responsible for growth to get to large numbers, millions of numbers, where you look at distribution, marketing, uh, you look at IP ownership, it's very, very important in terms of how we extract more value for IP. You look at content and technology. Over, over a large period of time, we've seen content consumption habits are driven by consumers and the human DNA is not changing, whether it's in India or globally. So if you primarily look at consumption, historically, there was print. These rates were subsidized. Even today, print comes to your doorstep. If you want it, if you've gone digital, you've probably stopped it. But for so many years, it's been subsidized for the Indian consumer and advertiser is kind of funding your reading habits. You move next, there is DD Free Dish. It comes free to your home. I'm talking masses right now. You move on to satellite and then internet. And then there is, there is this whole flurry of activity when you start splitting it into SWOT and AWOT. And this goes down the consumer funnel, right? So on one hand, we can talk in this room and a lot of us belong there, is cutting the cord. But there is mass India there, which you need to look at in terms of technology. So there is a layer and you start dissecting it. There's a youth, people call them Jugaad generation. You mentioned about privacy, people sharing the login. It's absolutely true. That's a large mass of population. Need to address to them. They are the future consumers for all of us. Then there is a value for money, the middle class, lower middle class. And then to me, what I, what I really believe in is free is profitable. Started from the print economy. It's true today in AWOD. Can you reward the community? So if the community is contributing to the platform, which is the streaming surface or anything else, 
can you divide your revenues back to them? And that's where I strongly believe the two pillars for growth in terms of reaching the magic number is really content and technology. It was their content and technology when we look at any medium, starting from print to reach that mass number. And today as well, it'll be content and technology. Yeah. <clears throat> Hi, good morning. <clears throat> So I'm asking content yeah. people to talk about this, by the way, Please, uh, because you'll come with a different perspective as compared to platforms. No, you, you, you tell me, uh, because what I heard is that uh, we're wanting to touch a number of 100 million. Again, we are chasing numbers, you know. Uh, we know we are overpopulated. You know, we know that uh, people in India who have consumed content on television for the last 25 years, they know whether they paid 100 bucks or they paid 200 bucks, they have paid money to consume content. Every household in India has paid money to consume content. Today, when you're, anybody's uh, watching it on the mobile, they know streaming comes at a cost you know, to everybody. So I think costs will come down, there'll be more value, you know, more ways of reaching out to the viewers. But very clearly, uh, everything I think is content-led. And we are such a diversified country, we can't really make one size fits all. Uh, and talking about one thing that reaches 100 million, that I think, uh, uh, you know, you have all kinds of content that comes for people to consume. We are, you know, as diversified as uh, our content consumption habits sitting here. So thinking about one thing that will fit everybody, I don't think it's possible. Uh, secondly, and why should we do that? Firstly, you know, we have any uh, category, we have brands in, in all shapes and sizes, which appeal to the masses, some to the classes. And uh, the brand value doesn't really mean uh, how many numbers you have, you know. Like there are, there are brands which are the mass selling brands, but they're not, not the most premium brands. Today you buy a car, which is a premium segment car, you pay a premium for it. That does not mean that uh, that's the largest selling car. So I think it's a very basic difference on how we look at content and how we look at numbers. Uh, so every platform that will come, I think that they will have their own, uh, uh, it's the same thing that's happened on TV. I don't think anything new is happening here. It's just that technology is ensured that all of it comes on one platform and you can watch uh, star movies to a uh, star plus on the same platform. It's basically like that for me from a content standpoint and uh, numbers wise I believe that uh, numbers will definitely come uh, whether it's through award or SWOT but primarily if we're talking about a platform we're talking about only numbers because every platform will be different you know you will not be uh, catering to everybody so overall I feel it's it's we're at the just at the beginning of what's going to happen, like Shivashi said, we, I'm, I'm sure all of us here in the years to come are certainly, uh, we don't know where it's going to go from here, but we are the tip of the iceberg for certain. I've always believed that and it's, a, it's the best time for uh, content creators. Platforms have to figure out uh, their lives a lot, you know, and I think uh, that journey will, will help them understand because, and I really hope that data doesn't come into our way of telling stories. Uh, and we remain as, as um, what's happened in the history of the last 25 years on television from a content standpoint. I just feel and I believe that, you know, we, are a, we, we have now just ensured that people don't uh, watch anything at a particular time. They watch it at their convenience. And that depends on different kinds of people. Earlier, data would tell us that only people come back home by 6.37. Between 7 to 11 is the time for consumption. So yeah, so who sits in front of the TV? So accordingly, you get uh, that kind of content made. There's a brief that comes in and you think that, okay, fine. You're not making content for yourself. You're making it for X, Y, Z. Uh, but I feel now, I don't think anybody can give that excuse because there is an audience that can watch at any hour and there is an all kinds of uh, viewership that's available today. So for me, I think in a nutshell, numbers will definitely come because it's just a matter of time of cracking it how exactly and how much is that number going to be of value. So in a nutshell, that's what I feel. So I'm going to move to Regan now. Regan, uh, has the content succeeded or is it the partnerships, the distribution, the, you know, and it's the initial euphoria, the first time, you know, when something new comes to the market, the new triers, etc. Has the content succeeded or is it all the rest which has succeeded more so far? My opinion is that the content has not really gone to the extent it has. It should have. Um, so, if, if you look at it and ask saying, has it gone to the extent that we would love to? Maybe not. Uh, but I think content also has succeeded to that extent because we've suddenly given a very different type of content to the audiences. It's a scaled up thing. Well, I won't use the word edgy and all that, uh, but it's certainly something different from regular television. Um, 
but yes over time possibly an audience that's used to television needs to be slowly moved into that with simpler stuff straight away jumping into things where you have to read between the lines more and that type of content will not really get absorbed that faster um but but there is a demand for a different type of content and i think if i have to match this point with the previous one i think what whether we get to 100 or whatever the number the key is to realize who is going to be your target audience right who do you want to subscribe uh, it's the 100 million video viewers who want to get on to ott whether whatever it is but if you want them to convert what is their age group and what is it that they want to watch if you're looking at youngsters they're getting into gaming so maybe what netflix is trying to do is right with gaming etc um if you look at their strategy in france for example it's almost going to match a linear channel kind of a thing with appointment viewing coming up and then staying back as catch up so i think uh, content will flow from that um i i think if we also focus as content makers on what that audience is wanting to make that we want to come on board i think that way we will have a much higher rate of connection on content uh but i think we're there somewhere right now and we're realizing we're rationalizing things we're learning from what's happening and the response we get on shows so i think we're on our way and like all of us will say we can't really point in one direction and assume yes that's the way things are going to be so i think it's a learning curve that we're on right now for content so subhash as you made 83 you waited for 2 years uh the box office did not reflect as aggressively as you expected it to uh what is it that the audience wants that some people may say the screenplay could have been better there could have been more back stories on 83 on the cricketers maybe it was too focused on the matches more it should have been but one expected 83 to do well and i remember talking to you and you thought it would do brilliantly well so is content working is it working on hotstar as when you put it on hotstar now okay so uh, let me give a, a little uh, general answer first and then we'll come to the 83 i think if we look at uh, history of our country we are a more than 110 years old film industry we are a more than 30 years old satellite pay tv television content industry we are a 5 years old digital content industry 6 years so let's give it a little more time uh i think what happened in this space when we look as i mean and i'm trying to wear the hat as a content creator as all of us we are trying to think that what should be correct is that uh we are also learning unlearning and relearning as uh, abhishek uh, stated is that uh what kind of formats what kind of stories what kind of genre what kind of language uh what are the nuances it's a complicated country we make stories in 25 odd languages uh multiple layers uh we historically we love to make comments like tier 2 tier 3 now probably we somewhere uh it is our ignorance that we think that okay there is a different level of story which will work in tier 2 tier 3 uh and who knows i mean all of us will probably agree that even 6 months back who would have thought that the out of the top 5 the 3 or 4 biggest box office will be south dub films and it is attracting uh, as much as in a small town in uh, rajasthan or as much as it is attracting in uh, bombay uh, nariman point inox so if a storytelling is correct uh, the language barrier uh, genres nuances all those divisions will uh, get away now coming back to your specific question on 83 yes i think uh, we have been waiting for making that film for uh, after making that film almost for like 2 to 1 1/2 2 years the film was being made from i think kabir has been working from 2015 uh what we could have done differently we would have done the same film again uh i think from all practical sense the film what kabir had dreamt of and we as a producer have worked with him uh probably in my own career of last 30 years i could only probably rate it with probably a uh maybe a 3d eight maybe a bajrangi or few films like that uh not all films the success and failures get measured by the box office success we have seen uh, uh, so many gurudas film or in the history 
not trying to justify that the box office number is very important, not trying to justify that fact. Several facts would not have worked and I agree with you, several things which you have noticed. Of course, the main issue which of course cropped up that on the third week, Delhi closed down, then Gurgaon closed down and the whole COVID issue was there. But barring that, leaving, even leaving that aspect, uh, we have not seen, I mean, when you look at a, uh, in hindsight, we have not seen uh, the kids have gone into the, in, into the, into the film that much. Uh, we have not seen it has worked in the so-called Hindi heartland, which is like Gujarat, Rajasthan, Bihar, UP, it has not worked. But the same film, now after three months, uh, we waited for almost, I mean, the platform decided that after three months, uh, the release on satellite, the release on Netflix, and the release on uh, Hotstar, I mean, almost over a period of 48 hours, the response and the kind of response what we are getting, um, at one end, it makes us extremely happy uh, that it is an overwhelming response. At the same stage, uh, we are also, uh, that uh, tinge of unhappiness remains that if it would have been in a different time, it would have been a different situation, probably the box office result would have been different. No one knows, Anil, that whether if but you but have is it done… is attracting new audiences to Hotstar? Yeah. So, the kind… I think I'll tell you the some uh, estimates like uh, situations what we have got that uh, both from Netflix's point, I think in the, in the… by the third day or the fourth day itself, it became in the top 10 film globally for uh, Netflix. And uh, so is for even from uh, when we discussed with Gorov and the team in the Hotstar point of view also, uh, that a significant level of audience has lapped up the story and has spoken about the story. Um, it didn't follow the normal journey what it should have been, uh, that it first becomes a big in box office and then comes to the platforms and etc. Whatever is the reason, that's a fate we have taken. Would we have done things different? The answer probably is no. We would have, because the film when it started, Kabir by on, I think original idea was in 2013 and then Vishnu spent for 3-4 years and then Kabir came on the board. We wanted to make a film of that World Cup victory. Uh, we probably, different thoughts, as you were saying, that there's some thoughts should we have gone back to the backstory of the cricketers, their struggle, how do they, I mean, it, we, we could have, but that would have been a different story. We started the journey saying that we want to make that World Cup uh, success of India, and that's the film about it. Given a chance, we'll probably again do the same thing. Uh, of course, uh, not being rigid about it, people will see data, understand, measure, make some changes, but the story would have still remained the same because that was the journey after entering UK and you come back with the cup. I mean, I mean we can't change the history. If it would have been a fiction, probably you would have changed a certain amount of history. So that's, that's probably my perspective on yep. that. Now, they two are agreeing that content is working. I believe that content could do better still, so far. Your perspective. So, you know, if you look at content, it's not just what you create for the consumer in those, you know, half an hour, uh, and then a series running in or what you create in a film. It's various moments which stay back with the user and that's, that's actually showing, right? So when you create a piece of content, it's important in terms of how it's not just going to be viewed the first time because the first time can have various aspects to it like, like you rightly mentioned about, you know, COVID, theaters shutting down, etc. The true success is defined in terms of the longevity that it lends and parts of content that will keep spiking you. So we all know certain movie characters, certain moments, certain songs, music, etc., is remembered for many, many years even after the content goes out. So how are you actually going to put some of the parts into that capsule that really impresses the consumer? And can the community actually go and create that messaging? A standard, and, and let's debate a little bit here, right? So we are, we're talking about movies and web series. We all know in the last three years, what is gaining importance is from a target group, which is in the youth space, is short form videos. Every day we read about huge amount of valuations. I, you know, there are, there are companies passing $3 billion. There are companies passing $5 billion. There are companies merging. And it started with TikTok in India. Of course, TikTok is banned now. But today, the kind of numbers which TikTok is put up globally without India is massive. It's the biggest app. Where is it all coming from? It's coming from content. But it's coming from content where the face is actually somebody else. It's a hyper-local consumer talking to you in your language. It's using bits of music. It's using bits of dialogues. They're all doing stuff around content. Very few of them are coming in and doing original stuff. And that's very important in terms of what are the ingredients that you are kind of putting in 
and there is no instant hit or flop in my mind. If you look at even streaming platforms, you look at large broadcast platforms, I come from that background, right? It's a combination. It's not the new content which you pick up today is going to decide what you do as a platform. It's actually what you have decided to do as an ingredient, as a complete mix. How many new movies will you put on a streaming platform today? The expectation is very high because you are talking to people who are cutting the cord. But if you look at mass platforms today, the number of new releases are not too high. And that's how it is. So you want to kind of take your time and build the ingredients well so that they stay. But really what you need to look at as a consumer mindset is a mix of various things, whether it's languages like Sid mentioned, it's, it's basically there's no size fits one, right? And I completely agree with that. And that goes with the format, whether it's short form, mid form, long form, that goes with whether you want to put music, that goes with the kind of genres, that goes with the kind of audience, not just in age, but how you are looking at that person contextually. It's going to be very, very different in that dimension. So you have to look at very, very sharply in terms of how you are making a particular original uh, and not put too much of expectations on day one, but look at it over a longer period of time. See, I feel that, uh, uh, I'll give a very small example. I think we all have grown up in a time where if we had to listen to some song uh, in, a, in a tape, we would play it, you know, we would hear it, uh, you know, plug it on, battery. Uh, there was a, there, there's a, a lot of effort that went into consuming one song. Today we can just name it, it plays, you know. The content uh, requirement, you know, technology has really helped that, you know, the whole process is cut out. That means the consumption is going to multiply, which is already has. I'm sure numbers are saying that. Uh, and when the consumption is multiplying today, you can just listen to any audio just by, just by saying the word, right? The so same with content, whether people are going to consume it on television, whether they're going to consume it on OTT, the viewer, the consumer for me doesn't really change. It's not like we're going to change the mindset of the whole nation. You know, there is a particular viewer. We, have, we are all different kinds of viewership bases with that television gives you. Same with OTT, we'll have different kinds of people watching. We need to make all kinds of content which appeals to different uh, strata of society and different kinds of consumers. So for me, what is important is that uh, you tell a great story. You should know who you're talking to. You know, most importantly, you know, you should know who you're talking to. And you tell it with complete conviction. And then tomorrow, short format can give you uh, a million bucks or... Uh, you know, tomorrow, you know, anything else can lead to uh, great success if you do it with a lot of heart and not project management. So if we do a lot of project management and figuring out that we know the consumer and we start telling stories for others, I personally don't believe in that. I believe you tell stories that appeal to you. For me, 83, I was telling Shibba, she's just outside. You know, I uh, really feel that whether it was consumed on theater or not, but it's a very honest effort. It has a lot of heart in it, you know. Whether today, tomorrow, day after, people will watch stories like that, which are inspiring. You know, and a nation needs to be inspired by such stories. So whether, you know, due to COVID, due to X, Y, Z factors, it could be rainfall, it could be 2611, it could be, you know, I didn't feel like watching it in the theater. But that doesn't take away from uh, the honesty that the maker has in telling that story. So I think that is the most important thing. Rest is all means of consumption, means of display, means of distribution, means of monetization, you know. But uh, I think everything starts and originates from uh, the fact that you want to tell a great story and you should know who you're talking to. I think these two factors are critical and rest depends on the medium of consumption, the medium of distribution, the medium of reaching out to the viewer. I think this is what my take would be. So, so I'm going to move on now. Uh, is it about time, the kind of stories? They've been making edgy content, uh, differentiated stories about LGBT, elderly women getting babies. Uh, if you look at what Hotstar is trying to do today, they've got an Anupama spin-off coming on. They put the dance show first on Hotstar. So, is there a perception that we need to go... Television has really worked very well in India over the years. People have called it regressive. I, d I don't agree with that at all, totally. Some, some shows have been regressive, but many have been progressive. And people may in the audience may kill me for saying this, but it's okay. That's my perspective. All right. Uh, so, I'm looking at... Forget Netflix. Netflix is an international company which has got Indian executives who are trying to follow the Netflix standard which is followed internationally. But it's Hotstar has, is run by, by an Indian head, uh, Gaurav Banerjee is heading the content and he's, he's experimenting with television kind shows. 
So do we see that requirement of television kind shows which are, which are catering to our aspirations rather than edgy content which, you know, shows like Tandav, shows like Mirzapur, shows like all the other shows. Do we see a need for that to come onto OTT? Who's going to take that up? So like I, like I said, I think uh, the key is… To get to the magic 100 million. Absolutely. Said, yeah. You have to know who you are making the content for. That's the content. And if they like to see television kind of content, it helps. Um, so if I can give you examples, it's like you're speaking of Anupama. Uh, there's, uh, we've done a show for MX Player called Forever. Um, it's basically trying to get into somewhere between the, the sweet spot between a television and an OTT, right? You're telling stories that people like. The freedom that maybe you will get is to make your daily shows into a finite series, which could be much like the, 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 the highly successful telenovelas we have from South America. There were 54 hours or 100 hours of content and people consumed it because they knew there was closure at the end. So one, you need to know who you're talking to, make content on those lines, and it will get consumed. It doesn't matter what platform or technology you use to deliver it to. Eventually, you're, you need to know who the consumer is. And I think that focus will keep coming more and more, even on content producers like us. Till date, we were reliant on broadcast players. Can I add something, to what, add go, something to what you... See, again, uh, Anil, you spoke about... Again, we are talking the same typecasting that happened with television for the last 25 years. You know, when TV started, we had some great content coming in. And then questions like these, that how many are you reaching out to? Oh, what is the mass? Then we, what we start creating a typecasting content of a particular nature. Now, today with OTT, with technology, my home screen is different than your home screen, right? So if somebody is consuming uh, a series like Anupama, like you said, on Hotstar, uh, you it's might be... Starting a spin-off of Anupama, which is 17 yeah. years before. Yeah, but they must be having data about uh, people catching up on the series uh, on the platform. And accordingly, they must be giving that audience that they have, which might not appeal to you and me, possibly. Like, I am making a series for Hotstar, which is launching next month. Um, it's my first, uh, like, whatever. But like, it's a series based on an app. It's a completely modern story. So as an OTT platforms, you are entitled to have a different audience base because you don't need to go to a star movies to watch movies. You can go to a hot star and watch movies. Earlier, the, the, the division that was there amongst a particular broadcaster about different kinds of channels, they've all merged into one. So uh, today, a broadcaster would want to have content of all kinds because he has all kinds of subscribers coming in for different needs. So it's like a store which has all kinds of products from premium to uh, mass. So I think uh, telling that whether we need to do more so Mirzapur's or we need to do more Anupamas, I don't think it's the right way to look at uh, the future of an industry which is converging. I think what we need to say is that we are a diverse set of people in our country. You know, we watch different kinds of content. People will watch uh, male-centric content, female-centric content because we have all kinds of people in our country. So why uh, so only say better? that? Is it the niche? Because real India for me starts after Borivili, you know. No, we, so are, we talk about real India yeah. sitting over here. It actually starts after Borivili, you know. So I just feel that uh, we should not be so judgmental about things. We should we should look no, at. I'm 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 just uh, no, sparking debate. My, I'm sparking debate. Of, no, no, that's I'm exactly debate. My, that's exactly what I'm adding to it because I I always feel that you know we can debate it out. We can have our perspectives. I just feel that it's a new medium. Nobody really knows where it's going. Uh, it's a great time that people with some conviction is, are, no, is not, are not second guessing a viewer. People are telling stories that they believe in. Some are failing, some are working, you know. And it's great time, moment, huge amount of things and data will come in. Again, it'll be like, oh, I know who you are and you know, now I'll tell you what you like and you know, that's what's so, going to so, happen. So and I, have, and I really okay wish uh, that we are following the Netflix formula, the HBO formula. Is India different? Do we need to have different stories? Not using edgy, the, you know, thrillers and, you know, Let me just, modern mysteries. Yeah, I'll just add that's the that. question I'm asking. Yeah. So, uh, Anil, and it's interesting the way you mentioned television and I come from both the worlds or rather the three worlds since I'm in Web 3.0 now, we're starting there. If I have to put just one word into this and I was, I was, it's quite interesting the way Anil put it. If I have to look at television, I'll say this is entertainment, full stop. Now, you can give it various forms, information, edutainment, sab bol sakte ho, right? different genres. But that's full stop over there. I'm talking about the traditional television screen, not the smart TV. If I look at an evolved user 
which is coming in now. When I say evolved user, somebody wants to move from a television screen, could be anyone, right? Like I agree with what Sid said in terms of who this audience is, this is a different animal. This person has evolved over a period of time from internet, social, etc. I would call it social entertainment. It's not a lean back culture. I want to participate more. I want to put something on social media. I want, I want to be participative. I'll comment. I'll, I'll say something. I'll have a point of view with my friends. I may not necessarily be in social media. And that's the importance in terms of these guys. Some of them are going up the ladder. Some of them prefer to stay there. And India is mass. And if I have to add one more word in terms of what I see, that's where I started off in terms of content and technology being the pillars. And that's going to unlock the volume, value for all content creators here. It's social entertainment commerce. Because when we step into the metaverse, which is beyond streaming, it'll give you a chance to say, hey, this is the power of my content and my IP. How do I make more money from just putting this up in streaming on video, putting it on broadcast, putting it on Spotify, putting it on streaming services, or leveraging all your rights, including distribution, international, including looking at how you work with theaters, etc. And to me, that's, that's really unlocking the value, saying can we move from just entertainment to social entertainment, and then actually looking at social entertainment commerce as well. Sebastian, you haven't spoken on this. So, uh, one thing I completely agree with you, television is not regressive. And I'm happy to get beaten up <laughs> along with you if people think. See, in a country like us, uh, if we have different choices of food or different choices of our dress, why not the different choices of content? Uh, a people, a person who loves biryani will equally love the Italian food or a continental food or a dal chawl on his given day. Now, giving my own perspective, or maybe an individual perspective, in 2000, I think, we launched the first uh, Netflix show in India, Sacred Games. Uh, as I speak now, half an hour back, uh, we just launched the trailer of Rohit Shetty's Cop Universe, which will come in the Amazon. Very different story, very different size, very different scale. It will go to very different audience. Uh, it's not... It's not or, it's and or, I mean, at the end of the say, situation. Uh, in a country as wide as that, I do agree that there are several, I mean, there is nothing wrong or I will probably absolutely agree that there is a sizable audience who are sitting and waiting for that uh, AG content, which <laughs> in your, uh, you're saying that the content which, uh, which probably uh, Netflix or HBO Max, we have loved those uh, English contents and we have seen that and they will, pro I'm sure that they're even their India team and India uh, platforms will, are churning out great contents. At the same point of time, there is a large Bharat which is waiting for the next big uh, KGF to come on your uh, equivalent content to come on your platform. So it's, it's, it's a large country, different kind of audiences. Uh, Genres probably which I love to see more, uh, which I have not yet seen. I probably I love to see more on sports. Probably I love to see more on animation, uh, more of nonfiction, uh, maybe uh, more on, on musical. So there are several. I mean, it's a rich area of storytellers, huge country, and I think in this kind of country or this kind of diverse country, which even uh, Siddharth is also mentioning, there is a place for everyone. There is an audience for everyone. What is helping us today is the technology. It never helped. I mean, See, if I you... I was speaking to a writer this morning. Yeah. She told me that all the platforms are resorting to creative and intellectual masturbation right now. They've got the freedom. They were locked up by television. Now they've got the freedom. And they're just telling stories like are being told internationally. And they're right, telling them with an Indian flavor. So, whereas they're not really looking at shifting the bar in terms of creativity and content, which will touch the masses. If you're getting what I'm saying. No, no, because, I, yeah. I get that. The limited point I'm saying is that whether it's, I mean, it's, it's an evolving journey as with the last time I mentioned that you, it's a five years old industry in India. You have to give a little more time for the things to set up. But situation is that there is a story for everyone. Sure. Now, one has to identify that audience and you are correct that creative freedom within the boundaries of financial discipline. If that can be made, you have a great position at the end of the day. It, it, see, what happened every time I go back to the film, because film has 110 years, 120 years back, uh, history in this country. In films, while 
every film will be respected for a great writer and a director uh, equally respect or a position is for the producer because the producer put his neck out on the block and take a call that i am backing this story uh, without that amount of technology and data available which is available today in today's world we have to see that coming from the platforms the platforms have to give that conviction to the different creators and the storytellers that even if it is not within that success formula or or the data uh, probably there is a science to that gut probably i have to follow our gut and you uh, and we have to see that whether the story works or not definitely in a country as wide as india that opportunity will be there yeah so you see opportunity for television like so shows absolutely made made with better production values which will actually cater to our cultural ethos rather than replicating what works in other markets for Anil, india no no i actually i what a point i'm saying television for me is a platform as ott is, for me is a platform it's just story the same audiences are same jo audience aaj uh, uh, bhopal mein baithke jo story film mein dekhna chahta hai wo ghar mein baithke suddenly uska choice difference nahi hoga so but do you see a, you know us crossing the 100 million with those kind of stories what that kind of you, content or so, do you see the same content so, which is being repetitively so, made across all platforms so i'll give i'll give you another example there may be there may be a family which is sitting in pali hill in bandra and he wants to see the next version of narcos at the same point of time there may be a larger bharat who is sitting for the next rohit shetty show yep. so it is not either or we have to live in a country as which will help us get there because the 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 the, the family in pali has already subscribed both you know but the family no, no, in bhopal I'm, may I'm not say, at the point i'm trying to say both probably from the point where you are coming from it's a large audience a large india from that point of view definitely the stories which will connect more to the masses has to come it is not that a a guy when he goes to see a cinema he wants to see a different story and sitting in the home but definitely from that perspective we need to see more stories which cater to the masses in loosely word what we use right now the word mass does not mean i am undermining his intellect so sure. he is happy to see a certain kind of story cater that but that doesn't mean that the uh, the the next money heist or the next uh, sure. narcos will not work it will equally work because it's as large a country as us okay i have said my bit questions from the audience now on this i really love you all to participate if you all think i've been talking shit tell me i've been talking shit i'm fine with that please pass mics pass the mics around if we have enough mics i'm going to kill you all if you all don't yeah just so that has something to say one second go ahead before that before you ask the question go ahead yeah i i really want to say something to this i feel that uh, you know when we uh, when we are telling stories we are we are either talking about uh, very massy products you know which are supposedly only caters to an xyz kind of segment and then there is an intellectual product which supposedly caters only to an intellectual audience and of course we are intellectual sitting here right we like only intellectual stuff so how we will, are doing intellectual how, stuff how, having yeah, intellectual so, debate so we are intellectual people so how will we ever touch 100 million we won't you know we won't we will only touch 100 million if we are making a movie like three idiots if we are telling stories which are which are there for the masses as well as for the classes which appeal to our intellect as well so if makers and storytellers are able to get this fine balance right you will get that 100 million yeah basically i'm trying to push platforms to go beyond just thinking edgy intellectual creative masturbation i completely agree with you that's all that that's why i put up this session that's why we had content creators here yeah, yeah questions now please pass the mic out and identify yourself Hello. please uh, yeah aapka naam bataiye please uh, mera naam deepak shinde hai uh, main ek writer hu sir kya hum uh, bahut zyada numbers pe focus kar rahe hain jo hamare consumer hai ya fir hame content pe zyada focus karna padega kyunki agar hamare paas content acha hoga to hamare number 100 million kya 200 million bhi badh jayenge agar hame kya humko kya karna padega agar hame uh, 100 million जो कंज्यूमर है वो हमें चाहिए तो क्या कंटेंट ज्यादा इम्पोर्टेंट है या नंबर ज्यादा या मार्केटिंग ज्यादा इम्पोर्टेंट है आपको एक कहानी दिल से कहनी पड़ेगी और ये सब कुछ नहीं सोचना पड़ेगा तभी नंबर आएगा जी सर थैंक यू सो मच एनी अदर क्वेश्चन या दिस लेडी हियर अप फ्रंट आइडेंटिफाई योर सेल्फ एंड ओके हीज बीन स्टैंडिंग बिहाइंड लेट एम आइडेंटिफाई Yes, so my name is Sangeeta Wadwani and I was with Hello Magazine for 10 years and interestingly Thar has just dropped on Netflix Anil Kapoor and Harshvardhan Kapoor where Anil has backed his son 
Now his son says, I don't subscribe to box office hits. I don't subscribe to hits as an idea. So he's like in your in edgy zone and intellectual masturbation, whatever it is. He's also very entitled. But what my question was, are we encouraging a new generation of entertainers who are going to think like Harshvardhan, that box office hits don't matter? And if that is the case, eventually, since Netflix can give you data on viewership, Eventually, are we going to see new formulas taking place on Netflix, driven by data? I think that's what's working. That's what they've been doing. No, so I think uh, the first thing first is that whether our data is representing our viewer is sitting in his, uh, in his drawing room and seeing that the next third, or whether that viewer is buying a 500 rupees ticket and going to the cinema hall. The success of a story will always be an important if a consumer is seeing. In which mode of payment he's paying, that is secondary. Uh, I don't think any organizations, uh, whether it is the Netflix or whether it is any of the other platforms, uh, can survive uh, if there is no monetization, uh, whether that monetization is coming from a play or the monetization is coming from uh, people. Is so paying is only a mechanism. If your story has to be, has to attract a consumer, now, how you are going to pay, are you going to drive all the way to a multiplex and see a film and uh, or you are going to see it at the home, it is only a different experience, different opportunities which are available. Uh, no organization can survive unless he sees that the consumer is coming and consumer is paying, whether that is coming through ad or it's coming through a subscription. Uh, so I don't think that it is, it, we should classify something that which is intellectual and AG which can afford through non-payment. Tomorrow, if that story does not work, it will be dropped like a hot potato. That's the reality of the life, whether it is dropped on the OTT platform or dropped in the box office. Uh, in the same breath, it is not necessarily everything which is successful in a platform is not successful uh, or not successful in a platform is truly represents the success and failure of the story. Uh, to make it clear, as we have been I'm mentioning when you're giving the example of 83, like Jane Bido Yaro, it's a cult film. I, I mean, I can rattle 10 films like that, which probably have not got that box office success, but loved by the audience in the television. So, a audience has seen a film. Someone has to see it, someone appreciate it. The world cannot say that, boss, I am AG and I am intellectual and nobody is seeing, but I am still premium. That world does not exist. Ultimately, it counts for money. Somebody has to pay for it. Yeah. So, you were asking a question. Yeah. Identify yourself. Yeah. Hi, I am Rahil Khan from World of Bollywood Productions. And it's great to be here. And I don't have a question as such, but as a compliment that it was a great first uh, session and it was extremely interesting and stimulating the conversations you had and it kind of opened my mind because I am a Pali Hill audience. So it kind of, uh, and I used to wonder what's happening, what is this stuff going on on OTTs. But now after listening to you guys, I've realized that there is a big Bharat after Borivali and, uh, and they, they consume and they are in large numbers. So we need to cater for them also. So thank you for a very stimulating and interesting and eye-opening first session and uh, just a comment I was going to have a private conversation with Su uh, Subhashis later but I think I'll take this opportunity to make it public. Uh, Sir, 83 was a fantastic film and you gave a very beautiful answer. It's not the numbers which matter. It was a movie which, uh, which is going to be, uh, you know, it's timeless and uh, it's coming from a person, my entire family saw it thrice in the first week. Thank you for the movie. Wow. So, yeah. There's a question here, uh, and how much time do we have for this session? Because the timer is not working, so I'm, I may extend my time, and I'm notorious for that. I'm notorious for sending schedules here via. Sorry? How much? Okay, okay, so I've already crossed my time. I'm very notorious. You should have had the timer working for me. But, but thank you very much, all of you all. I think, uh, I hope I've opened the minds of people and even platforms to think for, of Bharat, not just of the Pali Hill audiences. And thank you for uh, expressing that very clearly. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, all of you. All.